you know, with my limited platform that I have, you know, I often like to start my live streams, you know, going into, um, I don't know, just conversation that I feel like is important because I, again, not only want to use music to entertain, but I also want it to be something to uplift. And um, a few days ago, I heard about the story of Antoinette Bonnie Candia Bailey. And I hope I pronounced her name right. I don't know if anybody's heard, but she was a, let me see. I know she was a professor. I know she taught. I just want to be very specific about her position. Okay, so she was the vice president of student affairs, but the vice president nonetheless at Lincoln University of Missouri. And she unfortunately, I know there's censorship or whatever on YouTube, unalived herself due to a situation of bullying in the workspace. And mind you, this was a black woman, a grown woman and experienced bullying, unfortunately. And um, in her letter to tell her story, she essentially called out the president for being a bully and just all the issues that happened in her workspace before making the decision to ultimately unalive herself. And I wanted to talk about that just because it's important. And we're in a day and age where it's popular to bully people. And I know people troll and all these things online. And, um, you know, and it's, popular to expose people. And to a degree, I can attest to that um, or agree with the process of that. You know, if something inappropriate or negative happened to you, you should be able to speak your truth. I think that's fine and everybody should be held accountable. But I think it's an, a completely different thing where you lie about your situation you go to expose somebody online and um don't directly hold that person accountable but i only say that because of my own situation but i know what that feels like to be in a circumstance where you're bullied and you know in a compromising space and you get to a point where you feel like is life worth living and unfortunately um, she made the decision to not continue with her life. And that really bothered me. It bothered me a lot just because it shouldn't have been that situation. And it's like, and she was being bullied, you know, according to her story by her boss, her president, so it's like, okay, well, who do you go to? Um, and I understand what that's like being bullied in a workspace and then wanting to go to your union or HR, but everybody, you know, especially in spaces where people have worked there for a long time and everybody knows everybody, you even speaking up, telling your truth is something that could be controversial. And, um, and 
it's not likely that you'll get support, especially when the people that are causing you harm are probably backed by the people that you're supposed to go to to seek help. And um, unfortunately, this woman, the vice president, Bonnie, made that decision. And my point in sharing this, one, because I always want to start my live streams with something um, like usually motivational or just having a conversation or usually I'll just update you guys on what's going on in my life. Um, but that story really bothered me. And, you know, I just feel like it's it's something important to talk about. And I think it's very easy to, you know, point fingers and, you know, debate on whether people deserve to be treated a certain way or not. But, you know, I feel like it's not that hard to be a kind person. And if for whatever reason, we all are flawed in our own ways, we all have done fucked up things, you know, I feel like accountability is big. And it's easy to just like hate on somebody and, you know, treat them poorly, but don't actually look at your own actions and say, you know what, well, this was probably what I did that was fucked up. Or maybe I should have spoke up about this. Maybe I should have addressed those issues or whatever the case may be. And, you know, even in her letter that she said, she would say that he would criticize her on certain things and she would make the necessary changes based on the criticism. But when she would do the same and hold him accountable, he would basically just write her off. And especially because she voiced having struggles with mental health and depression and anxiety, and he made a mockery of it and with other colleagues. And, you know, according to her experience. And, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's very interesting. And I've oft, often spoke about, you know, people taking mental health as a joke, um, you know, especially people in the mental health spaces who, you know, careers or in jobs are literally to help people through circumstances and struggles with mental illness. And, you know, but at the same time, I often say people are people, whether they have all the degrees in the world, whether they are in esteemed positions and well-respected in their fields, people are people and everybody's, you know, um, imperfect. And I feel like, everyone needs to be held accountable. And it's easy to have these points of saying like, oh, you should seek therapy, everybody, you know, especially black people because all the trauma that we go through, which is valid and I'm here for that, you know, but just because it's something that's supposed to be helpful, that doesn't mean that it always is. And I know that people often say like, you gotta find the right people and all that, but it's one thing to not have the right people because, you know, you don't click well, but it's another thing where people in mental health spaces actively move in the way where they're intentionally disrespecting and not caring for mental health, you know? And I know that's a common thing in like the health field especially with women who struggle um, with pregnancy, like black women and the like mortality rates with childbirth. I know that's a thing, especially black women voicing the health concerns that they have and their doctors not taking them seriously. But it's another thing where you're, you're you know, the people who are supposed to care for you are actually causing you pain. And, um, and that's often a thing in all spaces, you know, whether it be mental health, whether it be workspaces, whether it be family systems, whether it be um, work groups and spaces that are supposed to be healing. 
um, you know, I think it's an important thing to discuss. And it bothered me when I heard the story and I did want to talk about it because, you know, I think that there's power in the tongue and clearly whether it be 30 people or 30 million people, I think to some degree, what I have to say would probably be heard one way or another. Um, and logically and even emotionally, I like to think that a lot of the things that I say make sense, but you know, when people are tied up in their emotions, um, of whether they like you or not, they try to discredit what you have to say, but there's nothing to discredit when black women are treated unfairly and speak up about it and nothing is done to change the situation and ultimately make a decision to unalive themselves. And then it's, you know, oh, we should have fought for this person, justice for this person. But it's like, what are we doing as a people to prevent that? You know, people just like to find entertainment in the drama. And, you know, oh, is this person going to fight this person? Or this, is this person going to play this person back? You know, is this manipulative tactic going to work? Let's go see. And it's like, instead of finding entertainment in abuse, how about we actually really look at ourselves because chances are we've either known somebody or have experienced that ourselves where we've been in situations where we had to deal with either someone treating us like we're not enough or like we're not good enough, like we don't belong. And I think as a people, we can do better to not do that to other people. And I know people like to constantly bring up past events and past situations. Oh, you used to do this, but you want to speak, but you used to do that. Okay, what the fuck you want me to do? Go back in the past and change it? I can't. But what I do currently do is do the work to show up better every day. And that's why people have to constantly try to play these games and manipulative games and, you know, use abuse as entertainment and feel that it's justified because of past actions that can't be changed. Although my actions every day account for my character. And, um, and with this platform, I figured it should be important to highlight these things and talk about this, especially as a black woman, especially as somebody that's dealt with these situations and especially as someone that every day fights for my integrity and fight for my respect and fight for my freedom and autonomy over my life and my privacy. And I know there's other people, other women, other men, other humans that experience that. And not enough people speak to how fucked up those situations are because, you know, as much as people like to try to cancel individuals for whatever reason, or it's the same people that is entertained by the abuse, but don't actually do anything to fight against it. You know, it's a, it's a cultural thing. World star, like people know what that is. Usually if a fight is about to break out, that's the thing. People are entertained by that. People are entertained by fighting and chaos and, you know, power play moves and all of these things. But when are we going to really look at ourselves and be like, okay, I'm too grown to find entertainment in this. You know, because if it were you, and there's some people who may be listening 
and it probably has been or is you currently dealing with that. But at the same time, you find entertainment when it's somebody else. So, I don't know. I just... I can go through a few different tangents with this conversation and different points when it comes to bullying in the workspace, um, mental illness, abuse, manipulation. Um, I mean, and bullying doesn't have to be limited to a workspace, but just harassment, um, disrespect, and you know, just there's so many points that could be and be a whole live stream in itself. But I did want to say that I did think that those things were important to say. And um, yeah, I just I feel like as a people, we need to do better. You know, you don't have to like me, you don't have to love me, you know, or whatever. But everything that I said is valid. If not for myself, for other people. Because I know there's other people who go through their own versions of that. And my thing is, I don't know what, what this woman's experience was. I don't know what her journey was. And, you know, what trauma she might have been facing. But... For her, it was such a detriment that she didn't want to live anymore. And I don't know her, her life story or her situation. I like to think that maybe she might have, you know, loved ones that cared for her. And I know there's people who deal with that and they don't. They don't have loved ones. And they don't have support. And, you know, and me, my, in my own experience, you know, I know the support that I thought I had was a lie but I know there is support that I do have and as I started this I'll end it on that note that um, again I want to be thankful for the people who have spoken out in support of me um, you know even if they do a little playing both sides or whatever the case just so to appeal to the masses um, well, no, I don't, I don't know if I respect that really. Cause it's like, you know, it's either you, you side with abuse or you don't. Cause that's what it is, you know, and I don't care. There's no way to justify it. And that's a fact. But to the people who do uh, speak up, and say something. Thank you. What would really um, be helpful to me is transparent support. Um, you know, because for one, my life should not be entertainment to y'all. Um, you know, whether it's fabricated or not, I know a lot of it is. Um, you know, like the whole, oh my gosh, she's trying to move out. Like I know in my own life, I would like to keep that private, but I know there's very little privacy that I have and that's people's entertainment. And I'm like, this is real trauma for me. You know, this is a real, um, abuse and manipulation and disrespect and exploiting my life. And, you know, even prior to me falling out with a number of people, who's to say that that hasn't been the plan? Now that I think back on moments in my life prior to things going wrong, um, maybe that was a part of the plan. You know, we see how far magic can go. 
Um, I mean, there's literal spells to cause you to break up with people or break friendships. And there's spells to create environments of isolation. And that's what abusive people do. So, um, you know, and I don't say this for me. I say this for other people as well. I mean, I do say this for me, but I say this with other people in mind because I don't just think of myself, but I know there's other people who go through that, who are going through situations where, you know, they might not feel like they have as much support um, because of certain people trying to orchestrate around their life for whatever reason. And, um, and I know there's people who go through situations where they're bullied in workspaces and they're really just trying to do a good job and they work hard and they care to do a good job and they're passionate about their job. I know there's people who go through that. I know there's people who struggle with reaching out and finding support and um, knowing that they're worthy of support. I know there's people who struggle with that and, you know, I could care less about what people think about me, but it, while I'm here on the planet, if I could do anything with my voice and anything with this platform, it would be to speak to those people and speak out against the adversities that they might be dealing with, adversities that I unfortunately have dealt with and maybe currently dealing with, but you know, I just want to say to anybody, whoever is going through those circumstances, that you're worthy of love. You're worthy of support. You're worthy of respect. I mean, I'll often say that, but I'll keep saying that because there's people who need to repeatedly hear that. You know, um, people who, and, and whether you've made mistakes in your life, or maybe you might have, you know, burnt bridges or whatever the case may be. Whatever. <laughs> like, fuck it. So what? Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has, nobody's perfect. We all have flaws. We all have mishaps. But a true testament to who you are and your spirit is the decision that you make today and the work that you do to shape the person that you want to be and you know don't let this world try to make you feel like you're not worthy for whatever mishap that might have happened in your past like okay everybody has a past everybody's fucked up in their own way and you know but if you're doing the work today to grow and evolve and make a positive impact in any way, whether it's in your own life, whether it's in um, your family and friendships, whether it's in your workspace, if you care to make positive impact, you know, I just want to let you know, um, my village, or just anybody, whether you're deciding you want to be a part of the village or not, I just want to know you're worthy. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of respect. You're worthy of all your dreams, you're worthy of a second chance. You're worthy of creating the life that you want for yourself beyond whatever adversity that you might have faced. And you're worthy of life. You're worthy of life. And there may be people in this world that try to make you feel like your life is invaluable or you're pigeonholed to whatever reputation that you might have had or whatever the case may be. And there's people who would try to justify treating you like you're not worthy. But fuck those people. Although they are God's children, fuck them. <laughs> and reframe how you see yourself. And know that, man, it don't matter what these humans try to put you through, try to say about you, try to hold you back with, you're deserved, you're worthy of being here. You deserve the life that you want, not the life that people try to put onto you and project onto you. 
fuck that. You know, this is your life. Um, you know, fight for your dreams, fight for your peace of mind, fight for, you know, financial freedom. Fight for everything that's in this world. If it's here on the planet, why can't it be you? You know, there's some there's people that live comfortable, beautiful lives. And some people may think like, damn, I know I can't get that or I'm not worthy of that. Why not? Why not? Like, get out of that mindset and know that you're deserving of it. If it's here on the planet, you're worthy of having access to that too. And maybe it doesn't exist because you haven't created it yet. Maybe it's something that you need to innovate for this world. You know, so. I just, I really just wanted to say that because um, it's important. And again, thank you to the people who have used their platforms to oppose hatred and oppose, you know, manipulation and invasion of privacy and bullying for hand-me-downs and broken hearts, you know. Not to minimize those experiences, but I feel like certain things just have gone extremely too far on a human level. And a lot of circumstances could have been handled with an honest conversation and direct boundaries on both any parties. But, you know, things have gone to an inhumane level. And I appreciate that there's people who recognize that, who have the common sense and the heart to recognize that and speak up against speak up against that and um you know i know i've said this before in a tweet a long time ago like you know these situations are not going to age well <laughs> it's not it might be popular now to be like hateful and um you know play these games and you know but over time like it's just this shit is not cool, it's not funny. And it's not even a matter of karma at this point. And honestly, I don't fear karma because I know in my life I've put out a lot more good energy than not. But I know a lot of people have brought themselves and lowered their own integrity and their own character to a level where everybody else's karma is going to be wild. And you know, where in Psalm 23, God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I don't even want the presence of my enemies to be near my table. <laughs> like, when that shit hit, I don't want to be nowhere near that. And I don't fear karma. I take accountability for anything, negative and positive, and everything in between. Because, I, I, like I've said multiple times, I can own up to anything that I've done if we want to have transparent conversations, but I understand why nobody wants to do that, aside from upholding this um, uh, orchestrated reality. But you can't out debate logic with me. And even if you want to talk about me, I will expose myself. But people want to, you know, I know it's cool to be deceitful and hateful and try to justify it. But the only justification that matters is the justification of God, whoever that is for you based on your religion. And um, we're all humans here. <laughs> you know, just because something's popular, that doesn't mean it's morally right. And I think that it's interesting how 
people justify being hateful based on morals they can't live up to. But I just pray we all recognize our ways, have self-awareness, be willing to do the work and be better people, not only for ourselves, but for others. And, um, and again, to anybody that might be going through that in their own life, like keep holding on, keep thinking that you deserve better and that you can create a reality where things can be better. So with that said, we can get into the song that I was working on. I didn't finish learning it. I know last week I said I was going to finish working on it, but I was caught up doing other tasks.